Today's episode of Game Geeks is sponsored by DriveThruRPG.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Today's episode, the supernatural role-playing game from Margaret Weiss Productions and some adventures as a separate product for that particular setting. This episode is sponsored by DriveThruRPG.com and for a limited time after the airing of this episode, if you're interested in getting your hands on this product, you can do so for a 20% discount by entering the coupon code GameGeekSupernatural into the coupon box. This is a licensed product, like most of Margaret Weiss productions so far have been, this time based on the Supernatural television series. This is a, at least it started out in my opinion, to be a fairly generic monster hunting setting that has really sort of developed its own mythology over the years of its existence. This game assumes that you are monster hunters of some stripe. Most of the Margaret Weiss Productions products have really been written in their own voice. For example, the Serenity game was written in Malcolm Reynolds speak. The Battlestar Galactica game was really written almost from the voice of um, Colonel Ty, really, and sort of the grumpy complaining about everything in the background. This game is written very much, and in fact, the entire conceit of this is it's written very much like it's entries into some demon or monster hunter's journal. It uses the Cortex system, which uses a die code for an attribute, a die code for a skill. You, add, you roll them both and add them together, and there's your target number. It is like I said, identical to what's been used in the Serenity game, Battlestar Galactica, Demon Hunters, Cortex Core Rules, and now here. The way your players can take command of the game is through the use of plot points, which you then, you can add more dice, another die type to your pool, or you can spend them for sort of dramatic effect where you can take a small amount of narrative control. Like most of the other games, the core rules have been altered slightly to sort of represent the overall mood and theme of this game. Obviously, this game is going to be a lot darker in tone and a lot grittier than, say, a Demon Hunters game, which is really more comedy combat fantasy. Some of the traits, your assets and complications, have been renamed for this game. For example, Well-Educated in other games is called Higher Education Here. Ugly as Sin in other games is called Fugly Here. So you can kind of get a feel for what that is. What I like about this game particularly is toward the back, it gives you a really good setting, or rather a really good idea for settings of your supernatural game. Do you take it out of town? Do you stay in town? Do you do the whole road trip thing like they do in the series? Along these lines, it has a really good bestiary. Sort of not only here's a werewolf, but here's how to use a werewolf. Here are some werewolf-based ideas and themes for your game. Into the adventures, kind of per se. Like I've said before, it's hard to review adventures, so I'm going to try to do these sort of spoiler light. The first one of these adventures is called Red Ghost, which is set kind of in American Southwest in Arizona. One thing I did like about this was they really kind of set up most of these adventures based on urban myths or ghost stories or monster stories of a specific area. In this one, you investigate what began with sort of a news report, and then you go into the fact that you, it's sort of like why something is attacking the building of this casino. Then it deals with sort of like setups, problems, complications, potential resolutions. These aren't terribly linear adventures, so there's a lot of wiggle room if your players want to work around these. The second adventure called Transmutations, this one sort of deals more with a with an alchemic or magic system. And this one you sort of you're trying to help out a, a dead friend's daughter on her birthday. The dead friend is probably another demon hunter or monster hunter that you knew. And it sort of gets into the mystery from there about why corpses are aging unnaturally and sort of an extended period of life that you that people try to get. It's a fairly well-structured adventure for something slightly different. There's no real obvious, ooh, there's the monster, let's go and kill it point of view to this one. It's more of a mystery that you kind of have to pick apart at the seams to figure out. The third adventure called Hellhound on My Trail is essentially deals specifically with demons that have escaped from hell and sort of dealing with one particular demon in question and sort of that character's either telling the truth or machination because you can never really tell with the demon and what it's going to do. The next adventure in the pack is called His Lesser Half. 
Now in this one, it's sort I can't really tell you too much because it really turns a lot of conventions for a monster hunting game on its ear. This one specifically deals with you don't really know who to trust or who the bad guy is in a specific adventure or in a specific setting. The final adventure, Synchronicity, is another sort of atypical, not just your standard, let's go find the monster, let's go kill the monster adventure, but more something along the lines of you have to, again, puzzle out a problem and figure out who the bad guy in a scenario really is. If you like the Supernatural series, if you like the monster or demon hunting genre in general, the, this is, these are some really good products for you to get your hands on. Now, do you need the Supernatural role-playing game if you have something like Unisystem, Call of Cthulhu, World of Darkness, or anything like that? To be very frank with you, if you're not a huge fan of the series and the mythology that it has built, if you're more into just the monster hunting and you don't really have the time to invest in a new setting or the money to invest in a new setting, I don't know that I would highly, highly recommend this product for you. But if you like Cortex, and a lot of people do, myself included, if you like the TV series, and a lot of people do, and if you like that sort of combination, that perfect storm of a gentle mythology in terms of not really tightly woven, but a, a gentle mythology that drives the monster hunting genre, this could be a very good product for you. If you're interested in taking a look at these, the coupon code GAMEGEEKSUPERNATURAL, seen below, will be good for a limited time after the first airing of this episode. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming. We average nine new titles a day. That's over 60 a week. And we've got well over 15,000 RPG titles online right now. Drive-Thru RPG, the one true source for RPGs.